They're basically working in a jail. Um, mm -hmm. You have these extreme cases show up. What did you learn the most out of those experiences? Everyone is the hero in their own story. Really? Yeah. No. So even ever somebody, in, even if somebody's like killed a bunch of people, they're still the hero in their own story. If you don't believe anybody on the planet will ever have even the smallest amount of sympathy or empathy for you, then the only defense you have is to armor up and say, I'm at least better than other people because I have trace amounts of empathy and I'm capable of it. Mm. So I'm better than all of you. So if you did anything, if you got a chance, you would do so much worse to me that, that I wouldn't do. So if me doing this is the bare minimum, I'm still better than everybody else and I can justify it and I can get away with it. This is where personality disorders really begin, really begin to form of mm. I am still the better person because of this. Therefore, all of you owe me this. Therefore, I will take what I need to survive. And that's where antisocial personality disorder, sociopathy becomes really a problem. So what would you do with that guy, the, the story you just told? Oh, I worked extensively until we got to a place where he actually made a full confession took ownership of what it was, sobbed his eyes out, got up and walked out and would never look at me or speak to me ever again. Mm -hmm. That was my role in, in his life, was actually to sit with him for months of him blaming other people and just ask questions and listen and thought and and, and poke a little bit till we got to a place where he could fully accept it was his own, his own fault. And then he withdrew. He completely collapsed into himself and would not engage with me ever again. So that was my role in his life. My role wasn't to fix him on that spot. It was to get him to that place. Mm. I hope, I, I have never heard from him since, but I, I hope that somebody else stepped in at that point or he was able to open up and connect to somebody else. That's what we call an ego collapse. And that's the only way someone with a full personality disorder is really able to change is they have to have an absolute total collapse of ego, which destroys them as a person. That person is dead. They are dead. And now they have to be born as a different human being. Many of them take the easy way out, quote unquote, and they're no longer in this world. But the ones who survive that gauntlet process, those are the ones we reach, we see the, the Ebenezer Scrooge transformation, right? Mm. At the end of A Christmas Carol, the, the absolute ego death leading to the birth of a new human being. And then that new person is very intentional. They're based on values. They're based on faith or religion or purpose. They are based into something. That, that full ego death is necessary. So you're basically telling me that... Uh Recovery from a personality disorder is possible, yes. but it has to be like that. Yes. So where does it even come from? Is it genetic? Is it biology? No, I, I don't believe that. There, there, there may be predispositions for how we can change and what we might do. Personality is, is partly fixed at birth to some extent, but it, it, it's all down to how does your environment treat you? How does it prime you? How does it begin working upon you? Do, do you connect to other people? Can you get your needs met? Do you have to fight for survival? Do you have to fight for resources? Do you have to fight your siblings? Do your parents listen to you? Do they hurt you? Do they abandon you? Do they let other people hurt you? Do they sell you for money? In some countries, that really happens. It happens even here in the U.S. So what happens to you? What does your world look like? You start reacting to that. So when I talk about attachment theory, people are like, oh, it's a nice, fun theory. Well, yeah, okay. If you can work with other human beings and they'll work with you, that's secure attachment. If you can't, you are in a whole other realm of survival. And survival takes on many different aspects and many different severities based on what's needed to stay alive. Hmm. So are there any cases you couldn't help? Like, well, what was maybe an example of a, a time let's where let's just- Let's define couldn't help. Well, I guess what is the example of a time where a person just didn't want to understand this and there's just nothing oh, yeah. can do? Absolutely. There's times where the person did not want to do the work. Absolutely. Is that is that the criteria? You actually have to want to do the work for this to work. Mandatory. Mandatory. Well, that's so I'm famous. I'm I'm famous for for being the guy who says every single couple can be fixed mm. no matter what has happened as long as both people are willing to do the work. If both people want to make it work, and are willing to do the steps to get it there, every couple can be saved. Everyone. Mm -hmm. It's But the willingness to do the work is irreplaceable. It must be there. It can't be built into you. A therapist is not going to be able to convince you to do it. You have to want to, even the smallest amount. That is absolutely irreplaceable. And no one can help you until you have that. Mm. So how long do you end up working in jail for? It was a, so maybe a year. Doing wow. that, honestly, and, and that doesn't sound like very much, but when it's day in and day out, out just full days of, of death and dismemberment, <laughs> it, it, it was one year of the most concentrated work probably I've ever done, and I loved it. The day I had to stop, I was like, I was, I grieved it. 
of losing that because it was so uh, such rich, intense. fulfilling work. Yeah, intense. It was it was wonderful. If you like this clip, I know you're going to enjoy the full episode. You can watch it right here.